Hello, AP Stats. This is Mr. Kim. So in this video, I will go over the review number three with you guys on this. Um, there's a, There are 10 questions on here, and nine of them are multiple choice. And these are actually not that too difficult. Um, but the last part where uh, for the open-ended, it might be tricky as to what they're asking. So let's go over this uh, without any further ado. Now for the first question, a least square regression line is given to us right here. And they're asking you to find out uh, the residual weight, um, which means we need to do the actual minus the predicted. And a 20 month old child has an actual weight of 25. So we have the actual, but it seems like we do not have the predicted. Uh, we need to use the equation for the above and plug 20 into. Um, the function here to be able to do that. So 0 0.65 times 20, because that's the time, plus 16.6 .6 should give you your y hat. So that should be 16.6 .6 plus um, 13, which gives you 29.6 as you are predicted. Now you do 25 pounds from before minus the predicted of 29.6, which should give you negative uh, 4.6 here. So that should be your residual. Um, for number one. Uh, number two, they're asking you to find out the correct interpretation of the slope. The slope is 3.41. So I'm really going to concentrate on B or D. And it's every one unit, one unit of increase in the X or what we call the explanatory variable. So what is the explanatory variable in this case is the X value um, which is the number of Fahrenheit by which the temperature exceeds 50 degrees. That's given to us in the context. So it's the number of Fahrenheit, which means it needs to increase by one degree Fahrenheit each time. So it should be B. Uh, number three, we have um, the X and Y, which is the amount of caffeine and the red rat's blood pressure. And the correlation is 0.428, which shows me that it, might be around weak. Um, there are some positive correlation, but it's weak in strength. So the correlation between X and Y in the population of rat is also 0.428. Whether you do X or Y or Y or X in the sample though, it's not going to matter because they have 100 laboratory rats that they have surveyed and their uh, correlation coefficient was 0.428. But the problem here that I have is this word right here. So the correlation between X and Y in the population means that all the rats, all the rats in the world, when you do that, the relationship between the blood, pre blood pressure and the caffeine will be 0.428. Well, that's absolutely not going to, ha going to be the case because the result that we have is only based on this 100 rats. If the rats stop drinking the water slash caffeine mixture, this would cause a reduction in their blood pressure. Remember the causation does not does not uh, does not mean uh, correlation. These two mean completely different thing. Causation means uh, cause and effect. Like this, if you do this, this will happen. Hundred percent, it will happen um, in sequence. Correlation means the likelihood of how well are the two relationships. Um, associated with one another. So when you see the word causation in chapter three, you just simply want to uh, just skip over that because that is not what we're talking about here. About 18% of the variation in blood pressure can be explained by a linear relationship between blood pressure and caffeine consumed. Now, if you do 0 0.428 squared, I do believe you get 0 0.18, something, something, something. So this is uh, explaining the R squared value. So it's going to be correct. We can go over D and E as well. So D, rats with lower blood pressure do not like the water slash caffeine mixture as much as do rats with higher blood pressure. So liking, I mean, what in the world? Like, what are they talking about? We're just trying to see the relationship of the blood pressure and the caffeine uh, in the uh, rats consumed, not how much the rat like drinking water with caffeine. So D is just rubbish. E is since correlation is not very high, the relationship between the amount of caffeine and blood pressure is not linear. 
um, the linear format has nothing to do with the correlation coefficient. Uh, it has something to do with how the data points are with one another. So are they curved? Are they um, not showing linear relationship? So the form doesn't really go well hand in hand with R. So E is out of the question as well. All right, number four, a high school physics teacher was conducting an experiment and we find out that the linear relationship coefficient was 0.964. What effect will have this on the correlation coefficient of the two variables if we were to convert all the length measurements um, into meters? Now, originally, I believe it was in centimeters. So if we were to, let's say, have a scatter plot that looks like this uh, from, I don't know, let's say from zero to 100 centimeters, now what's going to happen is that sa those same dots will be now converted into zero to one meters, but the time will stay constant. So time will be the same. So you might wonder like, okay, so is it is it going to change? Well, not really, because this, the shape of the way that they um, they are shaped in terms of like how they're displaced with one another in the scatter plot, that's not going to change at all. So um, in this particular case, because the standard deviation, standard deviation, um, we don't know anything about the standard deviation for this one. Um, changing from centimeters to meters does not affect the value of correlation. Yes, it does not, because the relationship will still stay the same, that it, they're going to be very, very strong, the time and uh, um, the length of the, um, I believe it was the length of length of time, blah, 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 blah. Well, whatever the response variable was that was measured in um, the centimeters, the length of the slope um, shoot, that's what they say. So changing it to meters will not do anything to a correlation coefficient. Remember, R has no units. So it's not like, you know, just because you change one um, unit of the response variable, why? It's not gonna really impact the R value whatsoever. So it's C. Uh, number five, a delivery service pack uh, places packages into large containers. So we have two. The two containers are chosen so the combined weight is closest to, but does not ex exceed a specified weight limit. A uh, random sample of flights of the containers are taken. Okay, so we have two packages, it seems like. Let's say I call this package one, and let's say I call this package two. And there's a certain limit as to how much these two um, packages when placed together, they cannot exceed a certain number. So let's say, for example, um, they cannot exceed 100 kilograms. So if package one was like, like super tiny, like one kilogram, that means that package two can be really, really high, like being a 99 kilogram up here. Vice versa, when package one is like 99 kilogram, package two has to be one kilogram because it cannot exceed 100. And when it's 50, the other one's also 50. So plotting those three points like this, you can see that they will all have this negative correlation like this way. Even if you were to switch these two around, like package two here and then package one here, it's not gonna make any difference. So it will have a negative correlation. That's the one you wanna go for. Cannot be determined, that's a lazy answer. So um, have a visual for yourself like this. I think that should definitely help. Uh, which of the following statements is the correct interpretation of the 19.0? Please note that that's a slope. So they're asking you to interpret the slope. So I am, I want to pick the one that says for every unit increase in X. So one unit increase in X, comma, 19.0 increase in Y. That's the one I want to, that's what, that's the one I want to go for. So what is X in this case? This context that's listed here, that's your explanatory variable. So um, I want to look for the one that says lead. So every increase of one ppm in concentration of lead found in the fish, that's the B. So 19.0 concentration of zinc increase. So they kind of swapped up the way that I say things. We usually say this one first, one unit increase in X, but 19 um, increase in Y due to one unit increase um, in X. That's the one we want to go for. Uh, number seven, which of the following scatter plots could represent the data with negative one? I don't think that really needs um, any explanation. So it's A. Number eight, look at the husband's rating comparison to wife's rating. Okay, so unfortunately for this, we have to go through each and every single one of them. Husband tend to rate the quality of living higher than wives did. 
That is absolutely true because you can see how vast majority of them have anywhere between eight and nine right here. Whereas for Y's rating, it really just varies a lot. And there's not much of a concentration, perhaps maybe between six and four, there are a lot of dots this way. So husbands definitely did rate higher than comparison to their wives. More, all, more overall ratings of seven or less were assigned by husband. Rating of seven or more, not less. The range in husband's overall rating uh, is greater. So the range still exists from like nine to like maybe four or five-ish. For, uh, for the wives, it's nine to maybe about all the way down to like two. So definitely for wives, it's greater, not husbands, it's greater. The difference in the overall ratings between husband and wife was not more than three. Um, Difference in overall ratings. Well, for I can, I'm pretty sure I can just pick one. Maybe perhaps something that looks like, I don't know, like this point right there. So if I were to erase all this. This point right there, it seems like husband rating was around 8, but then the wise rating was around like 3.5-ish or so. So 8 minus 3.5, I know that's definitely more than 3. So it is more than 3. For each couple, the overall rating assigned by husband was the same. Uh, no, that's absolutely not true. So husband rating was 8. I just proved it to you guys that there is one rating of wise rating of 3.5. If E was true, then they should have both have rated themselves A, but they didn't. So it's A. Uh, number nine, we are talking about the residuals here. So for the residuals, uh, and we want to make sure that the line is appropriate, which means we are looking for the randomness in the data of the residuals. So this is the one that's most scattered. So it's definitely C. All right, so the free response question. So we see the height and arm spans of the students for 12 seniors. Based on the scatter plot, describe the relationship. We're definitely talking about DOFs, right? So the relationship slash association between the height in inches and arm span in inches of the seniors, of the 12 seniors in high school, in a high school, sorry, in a high school shows positive, moderate. We could call it probably moderately weak, but they usually do not like this. But if I were to draw a line like this here, uh, I would say it's more so moderate than weak, I would suppose. So, Moderate, I would say. So shows positive, moderate, strength, linear relationship. There does not seem to be obvious outlier slash unusual um, data point. So we're basically talking about DOFs, yes? So we uh, we want to compare uh, the the relationship with those two contexts, give it to um, the college board or myself during the test in that format to get the full credit. Okay, so starting from here, we have graph one, which represents the, the best line of fit. And graph two, which has um, Y equals X. So when it's 62 for height, it's 62 for arm span. And you have this really nice diagonal that actually goes through these three points exactly. Now, if you guys are kind of confused about part B, uh, here's what's happening. You want to pick the graph that uh, that shows these three components um, better than the other. So a square means arm span is equal to the height. Because of this, you definitely want to say graph two. And why is that? Well, because graph one allows you to predict best at those particular x values like if it's 70 you're assumed to have about seven well it seems like it's like i'm not sure if it's exactly at 70 but it allows you to predict exactly like, the best pot way possible whereas compared to the graph two you actually can clearly see the number of students that actually has arm span equal to height which in this particular question is called a square so graph two in is the line help in classifying students' body shape is square, tall rectangle, or, or short rectangle. Explain 
graph two because the points on the line will be classified as square because their arm span equals height. Any point above, so we'll let's see, let's see what's happening here. Any point above means for that given x value, your y value is actually higher, right? So your arm span is greater than the height. So what, which one is the one that represents that? The arm span is greater than the height is the short rectangle. So any point above will represent short uh, rectangles. And any point less or below the line will be classified as tall rectangle. So using this info, I can go to this graph and physically count them. So there are one, two, three points that's on the line. So three of them will be classified as square. The tall rectangles here will be um, the one that has the points that's below the line. So that's one, two, three, four that I can see. So I'm gonna write four. And then the one that's above it will be classified as a short, one, two, three, four, and then five right there. So that should be five. All right, using the best model for prediction, that means we're using graph one. Calculate the predicted arm span for a senior with height of 61 inches. So for 61, it means that I'm going to plug in this um, equation that says y hat is equal to 11.74 plus 0.8247. All right, so plug in 61 in here, 11.74 plus 0 0.8247, 61 y hat. And you guys can put this into the calculator and then say inches. At the end, I believe y hat will give you like 62 point something. But if I just, you know, were to put in the calculator real quick, um, plus 0 0.8247 times 61. Yeah, so it will be 62.0467 inches. And yeah, that should be it. All the answers, there's an answer key right there. You can see that we have those answers right there. And when you compare the answer key, I believe we have everything um, that's shown onto this thing. So I hope this video definitely helped and in, you know, in preparation for your exam tomorrow. Good luck and have a good evening.